understand these eastern races? Asia, a land the West has clouded in myths and mystery. Perceived as an endless parade of simple peasants and dragon ladies, tribal warlords, and compliant concubines. Is this heaven? Another two or three hours of this, I may have to have my lips retreaded. I've also not ignored an appetizer for our male guests. I say, Mother Ginsling, what about those poor little innocents up there? They look really frightened. Our little Chinese girls used to be sold like that not so many years ago. I'm glad such a thing can't take place again. It couldn't have been so very pleasant. Oh, I don't know. Well, the Oriental doesn't put the same high price on life as does the Westerner. Life is plentiful, life is cheap in the Orient. They ship me to Southeast Asia. Asia remains the focus of Western fantasy, with a reputation as a sexual Shangri-La enticing Western men. In Thailand, officials resent this image, which for Bangkok centers on the very few bar streets known to tourists. The best known is Pat Pong, the public face of the Thai sex industry. visible side of prostitution for outsiders is what we would call sex tourism. It's the pat pong, go-go bars, massage parlors, largely catering to tourists. And it really is the minority of sex workers. Quite often people misunderstand from, well, from documentaries that I've seen, where all the footage is from pat pong, that this is the Thai sex scene. That's not the Thai sex scene. The, the Thai sex scene that we work in is much more sinister. It's much more hidden. It's in the type of places that tourists would, would never go near it. The sight that I couldn't stand is, was that when they have young girls put on the numbers, sat in the room with a glass window where the men can come and say, I want number 32. You know, to me, that's almost like animal and I couldn't take it. We are living together like brothers and sisters. I don't put any strict rules like everywhere else, but when they're in the box, they can't go anywhere. Sometimes when they're in the box, but there aren't any clients, instead of sitting and hurting their butt, if they want to go out and walk around, I don't mind. When clients arrive, they have to rush to the box waiting for the client to choose them and then to work. I'm from Chiang Mai. I'm from the hill tribes. I'm Karen. We don't have money, so I have to send money to my parents. The girls from the north have a better rate because girls from the north are beautiful. They have white skin, beautiful. They are the best workers. Isan or south girls, there aren't very many of them. The majority of the girls are from the north. In general, they are recommended by somebody. We tell to our staff if they know somebody, friends or relatives from their village who want to come and become masseuses, they can bring them here. We provide free apartments so they can have a good level of living. We share the benefit, half and half. I knew about this job and I came by myself. 
I knew from a relative. My relative came first, and then I followed. One year after my husband died, my son wanted to continue his school. I didn't have money. Then I came here to work. At the moment, I work in order to pay the tuition for my children. In the beginning, my friend was working here. When I got the phone number, I came by myself. Some nights there are six, seven men, some nights ten, some nights nobody. How much do you charge? 100 baht per hour, and we share 50-50 with the owner. I have about two to three clients per night. How long do you think you're going to work here? One year or two. If I have money, I think I will go home. Do you have a lot of savings now? Not at all. I just have enough to eat, to use, and to send some to my parents. How many children do you have? I have two children, two boys. 